So I have to be very vague here because I'm kind of protecting somebody. This is an insider that's telling me things that have gone wrong with some starships. Now, whether that's IFT1 through IFT7, I can't tell you this because this person needs to be hidden. They weren't supposed to tell anybody this, but they told me this. So some of the things that have happened to Starship during the flights that could have gone horribly wrong, luckily they didn't in these circumstances for some of this stuff. Okay, so you know there's a booster on Starship. There's a giant booster. It's about 250 feet tall, and the ship itself is about 150-ish feet tall. So the whole thing is about 400 feet tall. The booster is the part of the bottom, if you're not familiar. And the top part is called Starship. So in between there is the hot staging. So when the booster and the top stage separate, this part kind of takes all the energy from the top stage when it kicks off and it pushes it to the side and the hot staging ring flies off into, you know, in, into the abyss. But the booster would come back and land eventually in one of these flights, but I can't tell you which one this is for. I mean, this isn't the one that actually landed. So I'll let you speculate all you want. So there's a thing, and I'm looking over here because this is where my information is here. During the separation of the Starship from a super heavy booster, unexpected harmonic vibrations developed in the interstage connection points. So everything's moving around, everything's shaking. It's a very violent place between the booster and the ship at all times during the flight. Now, the oscillations caused a three second delay in a clean separation. So if you go back and you watch some of this footage, and I can't show you the footage, but if you watch some of the footage, you'll see there might be a little bit of a delay and they might not even show it on the camera. I've looked through a lot of the footage here and I couldn't find the exact time that they were talking about, but there was a three second delay between the clean separation, which forced the flight computer to adjust the vehicle's trajectory just enough to compensate for the altered flight path. So what this is telling us is that all systems, even if they go awry, the systems that are in place to fix these things, they're there and they work. So that was number one of about, I think I have five things here. Yeah, five things that they sent me. And these are for past launches. Again, like I said before, I can't tell you which one it is because you could might be able to track it to who this person is. Um, there's a methane header tank pressure anomaly as well. Header tank maintaining pressure for the Raptor engine's methane supply experienced micro fluctuations causing brief thrust instability. Flight computer constantly adjusted the engine mixture ratio to maintain stable combustion, uh, reducing overall efficiency by about 4% for this one flight. So that again, it, it means that there wasn't an explosion. Nothing blew up during this time, during the methane header tank anomaly, but it did reduce overall efficiency by about 4%. And that could be a big deal if you're sending cargo for somebody else into orbit. And if that 4% keeps you away from the orbit that you need to go to um, or makes the Starship itself actually push harder uh, and maybe not get you to the orbit that you need to get to because that 4% is a huge deal. Four out of 100 is a pretty big deal. Uh, it's not huge, but it's 4% nonetheless. Um, and there's been problems throughout all of these flights with the heat shield of the Starship. We've seen these things blow up. We've seen them melt down. We've seen them burn to a crisp. Um, there's been heat shield problems since day one with this thing, and it's impossible to get this absolutely perfect because, mind you, this is about seven flights in at this point. At the time of this video, it's seven flights in. So seven flights of an experimental rocket, and they're still figuring out the heat shield tiles. And it's okay. It's still a still not a production vehicle yet. So they're still learning and they're still working on the heat shields. Now, before I go any further with this, I want to ask you if you're subscribed yet, because I've noticed when I look back at the stats that only like uh like 10% of you are subscribed to the show when you watch the video. So that means about 90% of you just come for this one video. 
So if you could do me a favor and click the like and the subscribe button to help out the channel, I would really appreciate it because not only do you get my content, but you get content that's similar to this that will be in your feed. So let's go on to the next with the heat shield. So several tiles on the windward side of Starship showed unexpected thermal gradient patterns during reentry, with localized hotspots reaching 1800 degrees Celsius instead of around 1500 ish. While still within safety margins, it requires the vehicle to adjust its reentry angle by an additional 0.7 degrees. This could be a big deal in the future. If SpaceX um, it was going to land these rockets at 0.7 degrees could mean that they might not be able to land the rocket back at Starbase or back at Kennedy Space Center because they're off target. So that could be a big deal in the future when SpaceX's Starship is trying to land. Now, 0.7 degrees could also, depending on where it is in the flight, could send it over land and over people and over a scary place if it does blow up, uh, if it does have a RUD, a rapid unscheduled disassembly. And if that's the case, it could shatter, it could blow up, and it could just spray the whole area with molten steel. Imagine that. You're just hanging out with your friends in your backyard and you see the bright lights in the sky. You're like, oh, that's cool. But it's all shards of super hot, super sharp steel. That's kind of dangerous. And I don't know which flight this is for. Remind, I'm reminding you this now. Uh, but that did happen in a past flight of a starship. Uh, now let's go on to the grid fin actuator desynchronization. Now I'm going to go tell you this again. This is from an actual person that's very close to Starship's production. Just want to let you know this. And one of the four grid fins on Super Heavy experienced a 50 millisecond lag. And that doesn't seem to be a lot, right? Uh, but it's in this hydraulic response time, creating a, a asymmetric aerodynamic control during descent. Booster's flight computer compensates by adjusting the remaining grid fins positions more aggressively. So that's one of the reasons why they have all those grid fins. If one is a failure, then the other ones can take up the slack. SpaceX thought of everything. It's redundancy, man. It, it was built like that on purpose. Not only is it for the drag and to maneuver the rocket and the, the booster back in, but also in case one fails, the other ones can pick up the slack. They thought of everything. Now, the last one we have here is the communication array phase lock error. High, band, uh, high bandwidth communication system experiences intermittent phase lock errors due to unexpected ionization in the plasma field around the vehicle during reentry. So think of whatever starships were coming back in that were molten hot. Reduces data transmission rates to ground stations by about 60% for about 40 five seconds and that's through critical telemetry um yeah or though it says critical telemetry remains unaffected so 45 seconds of data transmission had was missing during this flight so it could be something where they miss a really important piece of data if they want to use this flight as a a building block for the next flights and they would just not have that data for the next ones. So those are five things that no one's ever published before. No one's ever seen before. And the reason why I have these, and I'll tell you this, the reason why I have these is because I spent about a year down at Starbase and I know some people that are down in that area. That's all I got to say. That's all I'm going to say. So I'd be very bland about everything. I can't tell you everything that's happening, but I can tell you that like because of these things and it hasn't shown really in SpaceX's Starship launches and the re-entries that any of this has made a huge impact on the actual flights other than maybe the heat shield. That might have been a thing. Um, grid fin was fixed. Methane tank, methane header tank pressure anomaly. Uh, that might have been a thing, but Overall efficiency was down by 4%. It's a pretty big deal eventually, but uh, yeah, they might be able to you know, fix that up. 
So I don't know if they fixed that up or what flight that was for. They didn't tell me which flight these were for, by the way, because they didn't want to be tracked back. So uh, let me know that in the comments what you think about this. Also, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said before, 90% of you haven't subscribed yet. So hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment down below, and also share this with your friends because we're growing this channel and it's going to be huge. I know it is. We're growing it um, organically and the audience that we have is really great. Also, we have a Discord. It's down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next one.